What's up people, hope you're having an awesome day wherever and whenever you're watching this. I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video here at Most Amazing Top 10. Now Satan's a bit of a mixed bag really. Some believe he's a red creature with horns and a tail, others believe he takes human form and walks amongst us. Regardless of whichever side you fall on, one thing's for sure and that's that no one wants to meet him. Doesn't matter if he takes human form, demigod form or centipede form. But nobody wants to meet him, that's for sure. But there are some people out there who claim to have met or interacted with him, so let's find out what the hell happened when they did. This is the top 10 scary Satan encounters part 2. Starting us off with number 10 is The Hand. This was from Steven Wagner, who said his dad told him the story. So back in 1942 in Juarez, Mexico, his dad was around 20 years old and he went to a circus that was visiting town. His younger brother came along and they didn't really go to see the acts, they were more interested in the freak shows. Disappointed after seeing the performers, they were about to leave with two girls when they ran into a short stubby man. The stranger introduced himself as the greatest illusionist in the world. That's quite a hefty title. When asked if he was part of the circus, the man said the owner turned him down because his act was so frightening the owner said he was Satan himself. Once he had their attention, he invited them back to his trailer in order to show them the act. Once inside, the stranger put a glove on his right hand, started running his left hand over his right while wiggling his fingers. He then started chanting bizarre words and when he took the glove off, everyone's jaws just dropped. The stranger's hand was completely skeletal. He turned it, let them see the back, it was completely real. His brother went to take a closer look and the man grabbed his head and said he was really about to show them something now and at this point, everybody shat themselves and made a run for it. The stranger came out onto his porch laughing and on the floor nearby was a bed of long nails pointing up which he jumped onto. Weird flex but okay. Blood started coming out of his feet but he was still just laughing it off and from that day onwards Steven's father and brother knew they had met Satan. Coming in at number 9 is Father Urban Grandi. Now Father Urban was a Roman Catholic priest that lived in the Le Dame part of France. He was under major scrutiny and received a lot of criticism for ignoring his celibacy vow. If anything he was known for having sex sexual relations with many women and as someone who had an elevated sense of a lustful depravity. By 1632, he was accused of sending the demon Asmodei to enchant a group of Ursuline nuns into committing evil acts and becoming his sex slaves, you know, as priests do. After numerous nuns made accusations of seduction against him, he was arrested, then acquitted and then re-arrested. During his second arrest, he was tortured by judges, after which they revealed a contract they found in his bedroom which indicated he had signed a deal with Satan and many other demons. They saw it as evidence of him making a diabolical pact and convicted him of witchcraft and sentenced him to death. He was burnt at the stake. At number 8 we have a better life. This one's from redditor Kodas underscore gaming who said he had a really rough upbringing. His father abandoned his family and his mother was a heroin addict. He used to see her getting beat to a pulp after which she'd take her frustrations out on him. CPS ended up taking him and his brother away but a few years later his his mum was clean and back with their dad and they regained custody. Sort of happy ending kind of but not really. They lived in a small house in central Texas and according to the user the house had a terrifying aura. Anytime he was home he felt like he was being watched especially in the bathroom and he would have regular nightmares. And at this point in his life his mum was working herself to death because their dad was a lazy slob who did nothing. She got so depressed she tried to take her own life and desperate to help the user started praying to God every single single day. But nothing changed. He realized for something to change, perhaps he could call on the demonic entity that engulfed his house rather than God. He researched satanic rituals for ages and finally found the one he needed. While his family were out for ice cream one day, he got on his knees, wax coming down the candles he'd lit, and cut his hand and started drawing symbols on the ground in his blood. Obviously while crying the whole time because who wouldn't cry after doing that? He recited the words and made the deal. And right after after he did that, a cold breeze swept through the house and everything went black. But he was pretty much unfazed because he expected something like that to happen so he went to bed that night and had the worst nightmare ever. He saw himself in the reflection of the mirror in the bathroom with corpse grey skin, bloody tears and his eyes were crimson as well. There was a noose around his neck and his hair was bloody. During the dream he thought this can't be me and then the reflection started laughing saying it is now, you made the deal. He woke up in the bathroom 
bathtub covered in scratches and scars and it just kept happening and getting worse. One month later he started seeing things, hearing things, his nail beds began to recede and bleed, his canines became sharper and his tongue used to get cut out of nowhere and he started full on hallucinating and having visions of the past of native people being slaughtered and how did that even happen I don't even know. And what did he get out of all of this? Other than his mum getting a high paying job, not much at all. So moral of the story, know what you're getting into before you ask the devil for help. Filling our number 7 slot is Joseph Smith. Now Joseph was a Mormon prophet in the early 1800s who claimed he encountered Satan before he saw Christ for the first time. We have both big shots in one story, how about that? The story goes that despite never doing this before, one day he just decided he was going to pray to God out loud. He went into the woods on a sunny day and knelt down and began to pray. I don't know why he went into the woods, he could have just done it in his house, but okay. But as soon as he did, he said he felt he was seized by a power that engulfed him entirely. He said it was so powerful he tried to speak but felt like his tongue was bound. A thick darkness surrounded him and he thought for sure he was going to die. And I mean fair enough for being realistic, if I felt that I'd probably think I was going to die too. He was ready to sink into this despair that was around him but in one final hope he used all his strength to call on God to get him out of Satan's hold. Then all of a sudden he saw a huge pillar of light over his head which came down on him. As the light rested on him he saw two personages in the air above him and everything was fine again. At least this one had a happy ending sort of. Now at number 6 is Madame Lalaurie. Delphine Lalaurie has been mentioned many times on this channel but just a quick recap for you, she was a big creole socialite in New Orleans. To the public, that is. Inside her house, she tortured and killed the majority of her slaves in a way you can't even imagine. In 1834, a house fire took over her mansion, and that's when she got exposed because authorities found bodies upon bodies of bound or mutilated slaves. One stomach had been cut open, and his intestines were wrapped around his neck. A bucket was also found with various organs from various slaves. A bucket. That's how much mass killing the woman was doing that she needed a bucket for all the organs she was harvesting. Anyway, with some stroke of luck, she managed to escape New Orleans and go to France, but many believe she didn't just escape due to luck. She invented a religion involving voodoo and black magic, and on top of that, people vehemently believe she made a pact with the devil in order to be able to still be wealthy, still be free, and escape whilst committing these horrendous acts. I mean, for me, it was either the devil pact or she paid a lot of important money to. To let her go. What do you guys think? Coming in at number 5 is the satanic cult. This one's from Brad who said back in 2005, him and his friends spent one summer TPing a lot of houses. In the town they grew up, there were always rumours of a satanic cult that operated around a 10 minute drive away. So one day, they decided to go check it out and TP it. Ballsy move I have to say. The five friends went there the day before moon, which I guess is a part of every scary story you hear nowadays, and they bypassed the fence and ended up in a garden enclosure and heard an eerie high pitched sound. Ignoring it they continued to explore, found an old locked church and found nothing else and decided to leave. Bit anticlimactic but just stay with me. When they got to their car their key which was working perfectly 10 minutes prior just stopped working. The car alarm started going off and then it magically just unlocked by itself. They piled in and drove off and mid drive the lights in the car just went off. The driver didn't press anything to cause it, it just happened. Panicked they rushed home and when Brad got to his front porch, he found three identical black cats. Keep in mind he lives a good 25 miles away from the cult so how do these cats even get to his house? He took the cats as a bad omen and decided to take the cats a few miles out of town and leave them there. And the whole drive he was being followed by two black cars despite taking small dirt roads. Now I don't know if people were just messing with him here or the satanic cult was there and they saw him and everything was there doing, but either way. It's scary and it's creepy. At number four is Giuseppe Tartini. Now, from the name, doesn't he just sound like a brilliant Italian musician of some kind? His name just has the ring to it, you know? Anyway, Tartini was an Italian composer and violinist during the Baroque period. He was very influential in Italy, but he was also known for his huge inferiority complex and uncontrollable temper. And I can just see that equaling to a lot of smashed violins. But anyway, the story goes that one day Tartini heard Francesco Veracini 
Rossellini playing the violin better than him and he was fuming and also dissatisfied with his own skills. The event made him spiral into depression for months and in that time he worked in solitude and practiced the violin for 12 hours a day. During this period it said he had a dream in which the devil appeared and he met him. He appeared at the foot of his bed and played a sonata on the violin like he invented the damn activity. He offered him success in all his musical dreams in exchange for his soul. Did he accept? Well it was never really confirmed, but when he woke up the next day he wrote down as much of the sonata as he could, but no matter how many times he played it, it just wasn't as good as the devil's version. If you want to check it out, the sonata in question is called the devil's trill sonata, his most well known piece, and it's quite hard to play even by today's standards. But the fact he could never play it as well as the devil, I mean doesn't that just indicate he wasn't successful in everything he wanted to be? So am I the only one identifying this major plot hole we have going on? Did he accept? Did he not? Let me know Tartini. Filling our number 3 slot is Gemma Galgani. Gemma was an Italian mystic, later saint, in Italy during the late 19th century. She believed that the devil was waging a personal war against her. She said he loved giving her horrible headaches to the point she couldn't even pray. I mean honestly I just feel like that was a bad migraine but moving on. She went on to say that once she was writing at her desk alone and the devil came and dragged her from the table by her hair with such force that her hair came out in clumps. In another attack the devil took the form of of a big black dog and put his paws on her shoulders making her whole body ache all over and another one she was drinking holy water and he twisted her arms so backwards that she fell to the ground in pain. If that's not bad enough she said he even took on the form of people she trusted or knew and once he even took the form of an angel. The worst incident though was when he started giving her blows to the head. She ran to her room but found him there with a rope. He kept trying to get her to give in to the wickedness and she kept resisting and so he kept striking her with the rope as she was on the ground. He then threw her on the bed, then dragged her from it and violently smashed her head against the ground and she passed out. Just imagine all this happening in your room and no one's there to help you, I'd be terrified. But I'm also curious as to what form the devil took when he attacked her all those times and if anybody was around, were they seeing this happen? Was she being attacked by an invisible force? Like what was happening here? Now at number 2 is Steve. This one's from Redditor Shabby Boa whose real name is Steve and who used to be a trucker for 30 years. One night after a drop off he was on his way back home when he stopped at a diner to pee. It was completely empty, no customers, no staff, absolutely no one. He quickly peed and when he came out a grey haired man was sitting at the bar. He told Steve he owned the diner and gave him food and a drink. When he got up to leave the man said food is not what you truly desired tonight. Waited out Steve left and got into his truck. About an hour and a half later he had to pee again, Steve you've got a small bladder mate, and saw another small diner which he stopped at. He went inside and again it was completely empty save a grey haired man at the bar. It was the same man who said nice to have you back Steve as soon as he walked in. Steve got pissed at this point thinking he was being screwed over by this guy and demanded to know what the guy wanted. He said he was trying to help Steve. He started asking about Steve and how he used to have a family. Steve told him his wife and daughter died in a house fire years ago caused by faulty wiring. But the man questioned him saying it wasn't just faulty wiring. The faulty wiring was a happy coincidence that just so happened to have happened the same time Steve left a lit cigarette in the house. Steve fought with him more and in the end the man offered him a deal. He said he could bring back his wife and daughter in exchange for his soul after he died. Thinking it was complete bullshit. He agreed and left the diner. Before he did, he asked the man who he was, to which he responded, I am the devil. That night, he got home as if he never stopped anywhere at all, and when he entered the house, he heard his wife say, Steve, is that you? and the small footsteps of his daughter. He was so excited, but when they came down the stairs, their skin was charred black. Chunks of it were falling off, their clothes had fused and melted with their skin, and Steve could barely hold in his puke. And at that point, he'd realized he'd made the biggest mistake mistake ever and that the next 30 years were literally gonna be hell. And finally at number 1 is the man. This one's from VR Greg who said she met the devil for the first time when she was 8 years old. She was walking through a forest on her way home from school when she encountered a black haired man in a shabby suit. Except one foot of his was a goat hoof and the other was a rooster claw. She could see them when she looked at him directly but peripherally they looked completely normal. She took him for a walk and then he left. By the time she was a teenager 
because she assumed the counter was maybe a dream or maybe that she just imagined the whole thing. But one day she was watching a news story about a man who got away with killing his wife and as they showed the judge announcing the not guilty verdict, the murderer turned around and smiled at a man behind him who wasn't his lawyer. She recognised him right away, black hair, shabby suit, hadn't aged a day. Her parents threw her a surprise 16th birthday to which nobody came to, which is just really sad, I'm sorry that happened to you. She ran home crying and she knew no one came because her classmate Erin had her party the same day just to spite her. That night she slept thinking about all the horrible ways Erin deserved to be punished and the next day at the breakfast table her dad looked shaken. He told her that Erin had been found dead in the park. She met the devil the same day in her room and he told her that she had wanted it to happen and he executed it for her. He offered her a deal but thankfully the one piece of common sense that 90% of people possess is knowing that you should never make a deal with the devil so she didn't. The girl didn't see him again until the funeral of her mother where he told her the doctors lied to her about her mother dying peacefully, that it was agony and that no one was around to help her. She started immediately screaming and her dad ran over to her and made her sit down. When she asked him where the black haired man was, he said you were standing alone honey and just started screaming out of nowhere. Shivers. That gave me shivers. And that's it for today's video guys, that was a lot of Satan all in one video, I think I've had my fill for this week, or year, or life. Let me know what you thought in the comments below guys, and as always I'm your host Eamon Hassan and I'll see you next time, bye!